Did you know that over your lifetime, you will spend an average of seven years menstruating? That's right, seven years of your life spent on your period. Despite that, most of us don't even know how or why the menstrual cycle actually works. So let's start with the basics. What is a menstrual cycle? Menstrual cycle is the normal process of hormonal changes that occur in the body on a regular basis to facilitate reproduction and which cause you to have a menstrual cycle if you are not currently re reproducing. <laughs> Oh my God, why, do, why does anybody watch these? Okay, colloquially people will say cycle and what they really mean is menses because actually the menstrual cycle includes all the days that you are not actually menstruating as well. But it has come to be known that most of the time when you say cycle or period, it means menses. But technically in medicine, cycle is the length of time from the first day of your period, which is the first day that you have bleeding to the day before your next period. That is a technical cycle. The days that you have bleeding, that's the start of the whole cycle and that's menses. From a physiologic standpoint, there's actually two separate cycles that are happening. The ovarian cycle, so what's happening in the ovary, and we have what's happening in the uterus over the course of a whole cycle. So you have the ovarian cycle and the uterine cycle or endometrial cycle, and those are happening in tandem over the course of the full menstrual cycle. How many times in this video can we say cycle? Maybe you should play a drinking game, but with water because this is important information. When you look at the menstrual cycle as a whole, we generally split it in half with ovulation being the center point. The first half of the cycle is what we call the proliferative stage, which refers to what's going on in the uterus. The endometrium is proliferating and the follicular phase, which is referencing what's happening in the ovary. Then you have the second half of the cycle, which is called for the uterus, the secretory phase. And that's basically the lining of the uterus is staying stable. And in the ovary, that's called the luteal phase. The reason ovulation is a center point because that's where the hormones drastically switch to a different makeup and it's a good natural midway point. We usually talk about this just to make it easier to discuss with 28 days being the length of a cycle. Everyone's body doesn't need to operate on a 28 day cycle with ovulation on cycle day 14. It's simply the easiest way to discuss this and understand what's going on and learn about it. If you imagine a circle that has 28 days sectioned out of it. The first half of the circle is the first half of the menstrual cycle. For the uterus or endometrium, that is menses, plus rebuilding the endometrium back, which is proliferative phase. The ovary is making follicles. That's the follicular phase. The midpoint of this circle is going to be ovulation, and the second half of the circle after ovulation, uterus, is in secretory phase, maintaining a stable endometrial lining in hopes of implantation of an embryo. Where you ovulated from becomes a corpus luteal cyst, and that is a hormone-producing cyst during the luteal phase. Okay, so how does all of this actually work? Basically what you have is something called the HPO axis, or hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis. And this is how your brain talks to your ovaries and your ovaries talk to your uterus. The hypothalamus is a part of your brain that makes something called gonadotropin releasing hormone. And gonadotropins are hormones that are made in the pituitary. So you know a while ago I said HPO axis, hypothalamic pituitary. So hypothalamus makes GnRH, which goes to the pituitary and causes it to release gonadotropins. Gonadotropins generally we refer to as LH and FSH. Those hormones go to the ovary and they work to tell the ovary what to do. So in the follicular phase, the ovary is making follicles. So those hormones are telling the ovary, all right, now's time for you to be making some follicles. Ovary's like, great, I got it. Now you go talk to the uterus, tell the uterus what to do. Those hormones go to the uterus and they say, hey man, it's time to rebuild the interior of this house, build it back up, make it fluffy, there might be an embryo coming. Couple of days out from ovulation, your hormones tell your ovary, okay, did you find the follicle of the month? Ovaries take a survey of all of the follicles and they go, yep, that one's the biggest. You have a big surge of that LH, which is one of the gonadotropins that we talked about. That LH surge causes ovulation to happen. The ovary maintains that ovulation site, so where you ovulated from becomes a cyst called a corpus luteal cyst, 
and that is a hormone producing cyst that is necessary for normal menstrual cycles to happen, progesterone is necessary for the second half of the cycles. So your progesterone levels are higher in the second half. First half is pretty well estrogen dependent, the ovaries and the uterus like estrogen to help build up the lining and find a follicle. Second half, progesterone dependent. So that progesterone level goes up after ovulation because the ovulation site turns into a progesterone producing cyst. This is normal. It's necessary for the menstrual cycle, which is why ob hate when you come in with an ultrasound and the radiologist has told you, oh, you have a cyst and you're panicking because you think you have an ovarian cyst and technically you do, that's actually accurate, but it's normal and, and you have to, anyway. Ovary's like, all right, guys, we ovulated. I'm sending this egg away to the fallopian tube, hopefully to meet a friend and become an embryo and implant into the nice fluffy bed that the endometrium has spent building up over the first half of the cycle. We have a corpus luteum making progesterone. That progesterone goes to the endometrium inside the uterus, which is the lining of the uterus, and says, okay, good, you've built up a real nice little place. I want you to put a halt on things. No more growing, no more moving, no shedding, just sit there. When that corpus luteum cyst gets to day 14 and it goes away, suddenly your progesterone levels drop. And when that happens, the lining of the uterus is no longer stable and it starts to shed and you have a menstrual cycle. So that's kind of the basic of how everything works and what's going on in the ovaries, in the uterus, and in the brain. <music> Hypothalamus makes GnRH, GnRH goes to the pituitary, which makes LH and FSH, goes to the ovaries, ovaries decide they need to make a follicle, they start working on that, Lining of the uterus goes, oh, we're done menstruating. We will build this place back up, put it together. Hopefully you will give me an embryo. Level gets to a certain point. The LH surges, you ovulate. So whichever follicle of the month was the biggest is the ovulation site. The corpus luteum, which was the ovulation site, starts making progesterone. Progesterone tells the uterus, hold on, sit still. Do not do anything with this endometrium. It has grown well enough. Don't make it shed. Don't make it grow. Stable. 14 days later, no embryo implanted. Corpse luteum's dead, have a period. This is the song that doesn't end. Oh, no. Yes, it goes on and on, my friend. That's enough, guys. Why? Do you not have a period then if an embryo implants? Like what's magical about that? Well, actually it is quite magical if I do say so myself. What happens if there is an embryo that implants is that that embryo makes something called HCG, human chorionic gonadotropin. Remember gonadotropin from earlier? Gonadotropins are hormones that are made in the pituitary. Yeah, gonadotropin. All right, so similar to those hormones, that we just talked about. That HCG does something pretty miraculous, in my opinion. I think this is super cool, and I am also a super nerd and love this stuff, but it goes back to the corpus luteum, that ovulation site that's now making progesterone, and it goes, hey dude, sit still for a second. I don't want you to die. I like you, you're my friend. Because if the endometrium sheds, the embryo goes with it. So that HCG, which is the hormone that you test for pregnancy with when you pee on a pregnancy test stick, it rescues the corpus luteum and makes it continue making progesterone until nine weeks when the placenta starts to take over. Nine weeks. That HCG keeps the normally very outlined 14 day lifespan of a corpus luteum cyst alive so that it can continue making progesterone and support the embryo that implanted. That my friends, is super cool. I'm making a full Q&A video answering some of your questions from the community tab, but the most common question by far that I get is what is normal? So in medicine, we use four parameters to evaluate normalcy of the menstrual cycle. Those are frequency, regularity, duration, and volume. Frequency is going to refer to how often you have bleeding. And for an average person, this is gonna be anywhere between 24 and 38 days on average. Now, occasionally you may have a cycle that is a little bit shorter or a little bit longer, but in general, 24 to 38 days is about the length of time you should be going between cycles. Regularity refers to how often your cycles come within a pretty consistent time frame. Look at cycle day one, which is the first day of your period, to cycle day last, which is the day before your next period. And when you count those days out, and you're looking to see, does it fall within the normal frequency? You're also looking at how much variation is there between each cycle. So is one cycle 24 days and the next one is 
32 days and the next one is 25 and the next one is 30. The next parameter is duration. And this refers to how long are you on your period? How many days of bleeding do you have? The lower limit is not really well defined as far as what's normal or abnormal, but we usually say three to eight. The last parameter is volume. And we used to say anything less than 80 milliliters is normal, but uh, hello, who's measuring that? I mean, I guess now that people have menstrual cups, it's more common to be able to measure in milliliters uh, what your blood loss is. But most of the time, if I said something like that to a patient in clinic, they'd be like, I'm sorry, what? I couldn't even point out how much 80 milliliters is in a cup. Scientifically, 80 milliliters is the answer. However, clinically, what we are supposed to go by is if the volume is intrusive into your life, it's not normal. That's a basic overview of how the menstrual cycle works. In the next video, I'll answer some of your questions from the community tab. See you next Monday.